So today we're reporting 45 new cases uh, of COVID-19 in the community. All are in the Auckland region. That takes our total number of cases in this outbreak to 1,230. It won't be lost on you that this is the largest number of cases we've had for some time. So I will go into a bit of detail based on the most up-to-date information that I have. First, 33 of these new cases are known to be household or other close contacts of existing cases, and many of them have been isolating throughout their infectious period, either at home or in an MIQ facility. Uh, of these, 26 are household contacts, and 12, for example, come from just two households where there are six in each. Now, many of these cases were expected. On Monday, I indicated there were between 45 and 50 cases at that time likely to arise amongst household and other close contacts who had already been identified. We're seeing some of those come through in the number today. Now, presently, there are 12 cases that are unlinked and interviews are underway, but what I would say, for six of those, there are already potential links visible. Now that Auckland is at alert level three, some of our cases today may have been working in essential or permitted businesses. These are the ones we haven't yet uh, interviewed or are being interviewed uh, during their infectious periods. This emphasises the importance of everyone in Auckland continuing to abide by alert level three measures. They are there for a reason, and this includes mask wearing and, importantly, minimising contact with others, staying in your bubble as much as possible. And Alongside that, I want to make a call out to all employers in Auckland to actively support any of your staff who are not yet vaccinated to get vaccinated today. So while the overall number today is obviously a lot higher, it is important to note many of these cases are linked to our existing cases and in some sense they were expected. But even more important is that we found these cases because people have come forward and been tested. This is essential for us to know what we are dealing with and high levels of testing across Auckland tell us that. So thank you to everyone again who has been or is being tested. What is the people in Auckland who are feeling pretty deflated by these numbers watching this? Do you, I mean, sh should they be prepared for, a, for longer lockdowns or is this just a, is this just a one off? Look, I think um, what we've said right from the beginning of this outbreak and, and as it, with every other outbreak we've dealt with, it's not so much the number of cases but the nature and characteristics of the cases that we're seeing that inform alert level decisions. So yes, this is a big number. It's a sobering number. I don't think anybody um, uh, who's involved in this process would be celebrating a number like the one we're seeing today. Um, but the fact that such a significant proportion of those are known contacts or household contacts does point a little bit to the nature of this particular outbreak that we're now dealing with, uh, in that it's concentrated in larger households, for example, um, and so we, we do expect from time to time that there will be blips. Now, we have seen blips already in this outbreak, where, where we've, we've had a, a bad day, where we've had a number of a larger number of cases and then it's gone down again. So uh, I would encourage people not to read too much into it at this point. You know, I think we've still got to hold our nerve here, um, and uh, we are still, you know, pursuing uh, COVID-19. We're still aiming to run this into the ground. Yesterday, I mentioned as part of the ongoing uh, outbreak response in Auckland, we are extending our surveillance testing to businesses where workers are permitted to be at work during Alert Level 3. We're asking workers, particularly in construction, hospitality and retail sectors, to get two tests at least five days apart over the next couple of weeks, whether they have symptoms or not. This is just part of our overall testing to help us identify whether there are any chains of transmission out there that we are not yet aware of and help us uh, assess the level of risk there might be there around undetected community transmission. I would like to emphasise this testing is voluntary, it is not required. But I'm encouraging employers to support your workers to participate in this. In addition to GPs and urgent care clinics, there are 21 uh, community testing centres open today around the uh, Auckland region, so no one should have to wait very long at all for a swab. And some larger workplaces also have testing available on site for their staff. As this is surveillance testing, staff are not required to isolate while awaiting the result of the test. They can continue to work unless, of course, they have any symptoms. Now, one of the cases being reported today is an individual who attended the emergency department at Waitakere Hospital on Saturday the 25th 
for a non-COVID related condition. They became unwell the next day with COVID related symptoms and were subsequently tested with a positive result returned yesterday afternoon. As part of the usual precautions, as the uh, person's infectious period included Saturday, a small number of staff have been stood down and the public health unit up there is following up directly with a small number of patients who were in the vicinity of this person when they were in ED. Now moving on to vaccinations, 44,000 doses of vaccine were administered across the country yesterday and I do know that there's huge interest in the number of first doses uh, and the way we're tracking there. Nationally uh, we have now around 78% of the eligible 12 plus population uh, having had their first shot and we're now seeing real growth in second doses and consequently full vaccination. In the last seven days the number of Kiwis that have had their, se uh, their second dose has increased by almost 200,000 to 1.8 million. That's 44 per cent um, so we're getting close to half the eligible population being fully vaccinated. I can't overstate the importance of those 1.8 million people now being fully vaccinated. It is a significant step uh, towards the ongoing protection of New Zealand against COVID-19. Second dose vac vaccination bookings indicate that we're going to see a peak of second doses around mid-October, six to eight weeks after the record numbers of uh, first doses that we saw in that late August, early September period. 55% of Māori have had their first dose, 29% their second. Uh, amongst Pacific people, 71% uh, percent have had their first dose and 40% their second. Uh, the 92% uh, of over 65s deserve a particular shout out for getting their first dose. 82% uh, of them have had their second. Uh, for those aged between 40 and 64, uh, the numbers are sitting at 82% uh, for first dose and 50% 50, uh, 50 for second. In the Auckland metro area, a total of 1,868,161 doses have been administered. 682,000 people uh, have, had their, had, have had both doses. As at midnight tomorrow, the requirement will come into force for all border workers uh, and roles where they might come into contact with COVID-19 to be vaccinated. This greater protection at our border gives us confidence that those people who are going to work and doing jobs uh, that potentially bring them into greater risk of contact with COVID aren't then going to get sick or die from COVID or pass that on to other people. Uh, if we've got another international ship, for example, present uh, with the virus in our waters, or if we have an incursion at our airport or at an MIQ facility, there's high rates of vaccination provide us all with that much more assurance. It also, of course, reduces the possibility of community transmission uh, of COVID-19. So I'm incredibly proud of the work that our border workers have been doing to ensure that they are getting on with the job and getting vaccinated to protect themselves and to protect others. As at this morning, 98% of active border workers have been vaccinated with at least one dose and 93% are fully vaccinated. That includes 95% of our port workers, which is a significant advance from July uh, when that number stood at 55%. I do want to remind anyone who works at the border but is yet to be vaccinated that they now have 24 hours until midnight tomorrow night to get their first vaccination if they wish to continue to work at the border. Today I can also confirm uh, what I announced on Friday. The Cabinet has now uh, formally signed off the funding for a new MIQ facility at the Elms Hotel in Christchurch and work is underway to get that stood up as quickly as possible. There are of course a lot of complexities to work through when standing up a new MIQ facility but the Elms will add uh, another 85 rooms uh, which is a welcome addition to our MIQ network. Moving finally to the self-isolation pilot. Expressions of interest for uh, the self-isolation pilot open at 9am tomorrow morning and we'll be looking for 150 participants across Auckland and Christchurch. These locations both have uh, obviously international airports but also established MIQ systems and support uh, networks that have been set up for regular arri international arrivals and that's why we've chosen Auckland and Christchurch. Participants will have to self-isolate for 14 days in an approved residence uh, for this pilot, it has to be a standalone residence, have no shared ventilation system, and be within 50 kilometres of either Auckland or Christchurch Airport by road. Uh, it must also have cellular coverage. No visitors will be allowed on those premises while the people are isolating. Aside from medical staff for testing purposes, 
or those attending to someone in an emergency situation like a fire uh, or ambulance people or uh, tradespeople if there are uh, critical things that endanger the health and safety of people isolating. Those isolating will have to provide their own food and supplies. Contactless deliveries are allowed. They will be monitored through smartphone technology and regular random phone calls to verify compliance will be made. Participants will be charged $1,000 to cover basic costs like transport and the other associated costs with the pilot. Uh, that is less than what they would pay if they were in MIQ because of course it is a less intensive service and we're not providing them with food. When they return to New Zealand, participants will have to have a negative pre-departure test. Uh, they'll be screened and tested on arrival in New Zealand as well. That's what we currently do uh, for those who are entering into our MIQ facilities. I think as the Director General has um, just outlined, we, we do expect from time to time that there will be uh, little peaks and troughs uh, in our case investigation process. And the fact that such a significant proportion of the cases we saw today are people who are already known contacts, already isolating, uh, that's, that does mean that while it's a bigger number, uh, it's less concerning than if it was a, the number that big of unknown uh, people coming, testing positive.